Hi, I'm attachment specialist Adam Lane Smith, and today I'm going to talk to you about something a little bit different, something that I don't usually talk about very often. Green flags. Top three green flags that this person is good for a relationship. One, two, three. First one, they value honesty. And I mean complete honesty. Now, I don't mean brutal sharing every dinky little fact. I mean not lying and not lying by omission. You're not lying actively, and you're also not covering up the truth or leaving the truth covered. Honesty, crucial. Crucial. Somebody who has attachment issues looming over them, they struggle to be honest because honesty is a risk. Sharing who you really are is a risk. Sharing what you really think is a risk. Being honest is a massive risk. If the other person is able and willing to take that risk and be honest and be open and not only tell the truth, but also tell the whole truth, right? Isn't that what we swear in court? Tell the, tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's what you're looking for in that relationship. Not that they completely spill their guts on everything, but that they're able to be truthfully honest, open, transparent. They're a fairly open book. They're not defensive when you try to learn about things with them. They don't push back. They don't hide. They're just who they are and they share it. And if they ever make a mistake, they say, you know what? I'm sorry, that wasn't totally honest. Let me correct that. These are signs of a good thing and a good person because that is one of the number one things that will prevent an affair is being able to be honest about what they want, what they need, what's going well, what's not going well, being able to be open about things where they're not hiding secrets. That's one of the biggest predictors of not having an affair. Right there. Because that you'd see it coming a mile off. Affairs don't just magically happen. You don't trip walking down the street. Oh, no, I'm having an affair. No, you, you go into it because of all these secret things that have been stacking up. If a person has honesty and openness to that level, not just not lying, but also sharing when it's important, boom. If you don't have to dig the truth out of them painfully, green flag. Number two, they take a stand. Now, I don't mean that they just ragingly scream at everything and they're an act activist about everything. I mean, they take a stand for the principles. They say, I'm sorry, I, I can't do that. I can't say that. I can't go that route. I have to be honest, whatever it might be. You see them taking a stand when it would cost them and applying their principles when it would cost them something. Now, the nice thing about online activism is it costs you nothing because everybody on your side will scream and howl about how good you are so you gain points. And that's it. You might lose a little bit if the opposite side goes at you too hard, but it's just this howling mob. Online activism is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking a stand for your principles. That could mean standing up to a bully for somebody else, but it could also just mean, hey man, I, I have to be honest. Go back to the honesty. I, I gotta be honest with you, and I know this might hurt. Please bear with me. That's you taking a stand for honesty. They're in an argument or a disagreement with someone and someone else is treating them poorly, but they take a breath and they say, wait a minute, how can I help you? Taking a stand for compassion. They're nervous about something, but, they, and, and, but they're being called to do something, step up and fill a gap, and they gather their courage and they step forward and they do it. Taking a stand for courage. Taking a stand for whatever the thing is that they're doing, that they're stepping into that breach. Taking a stand. This is long-term thinking, not short-term avoidance of pain. They are long-term thinking about causes and about principles, not just trying to avoid pain. That means they will do the right thing in your relationships, most likely. They will find those things in the relationships and do what needs to be done, even if, if it costs them something, even if it's uncomfortable for them. They'll be the one that stops the argument and says, wait a minute, let's actually, let's work on this together. I'm tired of fighting. And number three, they have goals. Really, 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 really hard to have a relationship with someone who has absolutely no goals, who's just a blank slate, because everybody has goals. They're either honest about them or not. They're either pursuing them or not. If someone has goals and they're not pursuing them, what's wrong with that person? <laughs> Why aren't they pursuing them at all? We admire people who pursue their goals. It's attractive. It's attractive in relationships, too. Have goals. Now, this is different for each sex. Men typically are not too obsessed with women who have goals, but they do want that woman to have some goals that complement the man's goals. This is typically how men tend to look at it. Not always, but typically. She has goals. Do they align with mine? Yes. Cool. We can partner on this and make it happen. 
women tend to look at men and say much the same, but they admire that man with goals because it means he is going to do something. It means he has something she can assist him with. Typically, that's how the majority of women, not all, but the majority of women view it is he is good, he's kind, he's honest, he's open, he's loving, he's stable, he's steadfast, he stands for his principles, and he has these goals. I would love to help this man achieve his goals. That typically is how women view it. And then they say his goals align with mine, so we'll achieve both our goals together, but I want to help him on this. It's how a lot of women value it and how a lot of women add value to relationships. Goals are crucial. Green flags, honesty, and I mean total honesty. Goals, taking a stand for principles. One, two, three, top three green flags. Do them, look at them, apply them in yourself and look for them in other people. Please like, comment, subscribe on this channel. Leave me a comment. If these sound good, if these sound bad, if you have other green flags, if you don't like these flags, if these are spot on, leave me a comment either way. Yell at me, encourage me, whatever it is going to be. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear it. Like, subscribe, grow the channel, help this channel grow. This is me taking a stand. We need to help, help the world. Let's really have a conversation here. If you like these green flags, I don't talk about them very often. If you like them, leave me a comment and say, hey, more green flags. That would be helpful. I've got more. These are my top three that I really look for when somebody comes in and says, hey, Adam, I just got a girlfriend. I say, mm, okay, let's talk about that. Green flags. Is she totally open and honest without oversharing and vomiting on the first, you know, the first week about everything that's ever happened to her in her life? Is she totally honest and able to be at, and able to go there with you? Does she have some goals in life or is she just surviving? Does she take a stand on principles or is she always hiding and running away and covering up and just doing what you want to do and never taking a risk? This right here, this will help. And this, these green flags are great for relationships, dating relationships and marriage. Also great for hiring candidates. <laughs> also great for friends. Also great for just about every kind of relationship, an organization, a leadership position, anything. These are three crucial green flags that people need to look for. Do them in yourself, live them yourself, and look for them in others. Thank you.